name's Vince from mymatevince.com and in this video today is another trying to fix video, another video where I try to repair something that I purchased faulty on eBay. So in here now is a watch. Ta da Actually, that doesn't look quite as bad as I thought it was going to. The pictures didn't really... Uh, I'm not a lover of gold watches, but the pictures made it look worse than it actually is. Already I'm slightly worried because I'm looking at that LCD, and I don't know, can you see there's like a band in the middle of it? Anyway, here was sold as not working, and this is the list in here. I paid £5 for it plus £3.10 postage. The watch is probably not even worth that. But still, I have to buy 40 items to make videos. So it says here, advanced quartz LC watch, LCD alarm, chronograph, vintage not working. And then the descriptions, quite a few photos, and the descriptions just is... It says, watch not working, could probably be fixed, I do not have the skills to do so. So I haven't really ever got too involved with digital watches. I've had a few goes on normal uh, automatic watches, but I did do... A job lot of digital, digital watches but they were mostly just things like battery related faults and stuff like that so uh, yeah this should be interesting now I'm looking at the back already a bit of a weird design at the back and this is this is this to allow the sound out I thought that that might be to allow the sound out for the alarm but there's weird little holes here which is strange because then here we have a little indentation to pop the back off so look let's pop the back back off it could be as simple as battery related but I presume the seller has already tried that now I've got my Chinese little watch toolkit that I bought years ago and to be fair it's still working okay. So let's uh, pop the back off. There we go. Let's see, is there a little buzzer or something under here? Yes there is. So that is one of those uh, piezo or piezo buzzers. I'm thinking it is anyway. So there's going to be a contact on here. Yeah, so that must be the contact for the buzzer there and maybe it's just using the would it be just using the ground from the actual watch here? So this has got two batteries in it. Hmm. Right, let's uh, zoom in. Oh, let's undo these. Straight away, I'm kind of pleasantly su uh, surprised by the look of the watch from here. It looks nice. Uh, looks like it's good quality. Right, so two small batteries here, and they are, what does it say on here, G2A LR726, do you know what, I don't know if I've got any of them, but anyway, let's see if there's any voltage in there whatsoever, right, 1.57, One point five four. So I presume they're supposed to be one point five volt cells. Let's see what, if it says anything on them. No, it doesn't say anything on them. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to look them up online just to make sure that they are supposed to be one point five. It says online that they're one point five five volts. So I'm pretty sure the batteries look to be okay. And it looks like they are in. Where are we now? So the connector. So these are in parallel, aren't they? So it looks like the watch is running off. 1.55 volts. So now, why is this not working? I think first thing we should do is let's zoom right in and see if the capacitors and there's a little transistor there. Let's see if they look okay. Zoomed right in now. So this is going to be the negative of the battery. Both of them here. Nice bit of spring there. Nice bit of spring there. That goes off. So maybe that's not making contact with where it needs to make contact. That could be it. And then these are going to be the positives of the battery. So we could do it cleaning that one up and this one up. But again, I think they're going to make a contact. And it looks like these are the traces. Yeah, these are the traces here. Oh, now, has the trace gone there? That could be it. Does it go anywhere else? Let's have a look. Along here to there. Right, that doesn't look right there, does it? Also, look, this thing here looks like it's been worn away to there. So I think we need to get to the other side of this. I presume that the tracks are on the other side, but that doesn't look healthy. We've got a transistor here, which is on all crooked. But to be fair, it does look to be okay. And then we have... Not sure, resistors, maybe capacitor. What's going on here? 
I wonder was there ever anything there? Don't think so, it does seem to be down that track. This is going to be for the buzzer at the back. Here we have the crystal, there's a chance the crystal's not working. If it's been dropped, that would stop the watch from working. And what we got here now, press that in, that touches that. Hmm, not sure about that either. See, that goes off down there. Where does this one go to? Right, let's take it apart further and see. Let's see the other side of it. So now, how does this come out? Here we go. So th something's been inscribed up there, K-A. Right, is this, uh, is that dirt or what? Has that been burnt in? Not sure anyway, won't worry about that just yet. So shall I undo these two screws? And we'll see if we can get to the other side. There we go. We have the display here and we've got little zebra connectors. You see these little flexible connectors here? So there's one at the top and one at the bottom. So I may or may not need to clean them. I'm not sure how well the display is going to work. Obviously we have to try to get the watch working to begin with. Maybe the maybe the watch is working. Maybe you just just us not displaying anything. Right, so now I think we better zoom right in and see what's happening. Yeah, it looks like these are the tracks themselves, so these must be the tracks on this side. So maybe it's to do with that contact there. I'm zoomed right in, so you can see that this is where the zebra connector goes to. One here and one here. And look down here, we definitely have some pretty bad corrosion. Along there, so that's not good, so that needs looking at. Uh, right, so we've got a little light, so there's a little backlight on this. A little night light, you know, where you press the button and it lights up so you can see what's on the screen. Not sure what this thing is here. So it goes to a screw on this side. Maybe that's to do with some kind of timing or something. Some sort of coil up there. Uh, these two metal things. Right, they go off on this side on these tracks. So these are definitely the tracks here. They're not... Uh, they look like they're kind of painted on, don't they? Right, so I think what we need to do is, and there must be some sort of uh, chip underneath this blob here, so if the chip's gone then this won't be able to be fixed. I think what we need to do is, I think I'm going to get a bit of IPA, but I'm going to be very gentle. I'm worried that I might end up scraping away this kind of, I'm thinking, is this some sort of conductive paint? It does look like maybe the battery's leaked at some time. I mean, look at this one here as well, that little wire has gone. Where does that go off to? Yeah, so that'd be unlikely to be making a contact there. And that goes into the chip, you see. And also look at this one here as well. Is that gone as well? Yeah. Maybe we should check for continuity before doing any of the cleaning. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit. And let's get the meter set up for continuity. And we'll have a look and see what's, what's working. So let's flip it over to the beginning. Let's just see if these two... Th things are in contact with each other. They are. So now that should go up to that little via here. But I don't know if is that because I'm not pressing hard enough on my meter. Let's see where it goes to on the other side. So hard to see where they go, but I think that that little via there, there's two together. And when we flip it over and look, the one that I'm interested in is higher up. I can't see when I flip it over can't see the other wire. So I'm wondering, is it this one here, which then goes up to this contact here, which then goes to this? So that might be like... Mind you, is that the... That's the positive up here, isn't it? So where does the negative go? It must be this one here.
Yeah, okay, well I'll tell you what, let's put our probes on here and let's see if it's making contact there. No, so yes. Let's see if it is going up to here. Well, it's hard to know. I don't know how much pressure I can put down on these wires without breaking them. I'm going to zoom right in again so I can see what I'm doing. Let's do these ones here, which look to be intact. If I was to go here... Yeah, but that is because it's filled, isn't it? I don't know how well that's going to conduct. Yeah, it does conduct, but you have to press pretty hard. Right, OK, but it does conduct. So now, let's go here and here. And it doesn't conduct, so... From the battery, we're not getting anything. And from there, it should be going up to, I presume, something up here. Not sure if it's this one, but again, that one's gone there as well, isn't it? So that's not going to conduct to here. Let's see if it conducts to here, which it should do. No, it's not. They all look a bit bad, don't they? Right, I've just gone on ohms reading at the moment, see if that makes any difference. That's in the mega ohms. Right, I think I'm going to try to clean it with IPA and see what we're left with at the end because there's a lot of corrosion on this. So that's what I will do. This is what I'm going to be using. It's 99.9% .9 alcohol. Now normally this would be absolutely fine. I'm just wondering, these little tracks here, if they're painted on, then they might just come straight off. So I'm going to uh, just do it gently here to begin with. I'm just going to give it a scrape with a, a blade. I do have a fiberglass pen which would be much better but the fibres really irritate my fingers. And then if I wear gloves, the gloves just make my hands sweat so I'm just going to use this instead. there's lots of rot on here and it's not really like these are just very very thin they're not like nice lumps of copper you know it just looks more like a little bit of plating put on there so there's yeah for example now can you see here that's just rotten between there and there so that's not going to be getting to there this one's not going to be getting to there this one looks just iffy all over but remember we do have the contacts here as well so they will be uh, between both of them that should be getting, but that's not getting here, is it? Now, because this one's not getting to here anyway, I'm just gonna see what happens if I do rub. Does it just rub straight off? Straight off? Right, so that looks like it's just painted on, doesn't it? Because I'm not really scraping it back to anything underneath. It must be just some sort of conductive paint. So now I've got to think about how can I get power going into this. And for example, is, is this one is is the one coming from the other side? You know, the uh, the negative down here is that actually making its way over to here or not? So let me see. That goes to there. Where else does it go? Third one up. Oh, it goes to here. So I should be able to see if I can get a continuity test between this side and here. Right, so I'm on there. 
Yes, excellent. Right, well at least the uh, positive, the yeah, the negative looks to be okay. Now let's see if I've still got it to here or is that one gone? Yep, still got it to there. But now I need to get it to where it needs to go. My only problem is I'm still not 100% sure where this fire goes to over here, which is a bit annoying. I'm going to look for my eye loop and see if I can work it out. What I've done is I've just bent a tiny bit of wire because this wire is too big to fit through the hole. And can you see it kind of measures to where the, if I go onto the bend there, it measures to where the wire is. And now if I go onto this side, can you see it passes that first wire. So it actually goes onto this area here. So now I should be able to see if I've got continuity between this pad and these pads here which we know we're not going to have continuity because the paint's worn away. Oh, we have got continuity, what? How is that possible? How is that possible when the paint's worn away from here? Is there another route it takes? Well, I was sure that that was worn away there, but it is making its way to there. So now, okay, if that's going to there, that goes into the chip after that, I think. Well, do you know what? Let's give the little, let's give these a tiny little clean. Maybe it was just corrosion on here which was stopping it from displaying. Right, let's see if that makes any difference. And then what I can always do is I can always take them completely off and clean the other side. Let's just see if that's done anything to it. No, nothing there at all. Right, let's pop this back in and let's measure for voltage around the place. bend up this little tap down here to make sure it is making contact with the board see this one here now hold on a minute look Wait a minute, wait a minute now. That goes in that way, yes? So we need the tab to be over this side, but there is no tab this side, the tab is this side, not this side. Did there used to be a tab there? Well, I'm confused now because this section here has only got a tab going up to here. But, this is on the wrong side. That's on this side here, and there is no. How's it making a contact with the uh, with the negative when it's going to here? This can't be swapped over though. That hasn't been placed in wrong, has it? I'm still just trying to get my head around this. So you can see these little screw holes here. So basically, when we screw in the bar that goes across here, this bar with the screws, that's going to make the screw holes positive. Apologies for the noise. So that's going to make this whole end here positive. Everything here is going to be positive. But still, the negative still isn't going anywhere, is it? Because look, when it's going to this side here, there's no other connections, there's no screw holes, there's no nothing. And that definitely isn't conductive. Unless maybe it was at once upon a time. It just doesn't look like there was any ever anything put on it. And when I put my meter there, there's no ohm reading or anything on it. It's just it's just it's just nothing. So watch this now. I've just got it on ohms. For example, if I go this side here, you will see it will give me a reading. Yes, yeah, so that's a direct short. But on this side here, I'm not getting anything.
Now, if it never worked from the beginning, why has the watch got so much wear? It would have never been worn. Really, really confused on this one. Doesn't make any sense. Well, I'm going to try to reverse it and see what happens. But, uh, yeah, it doesn't not make any sense to me. Alright, so there's still nothing. No, there's no voltage getting into it. The battery's too loose. Alright, now let's see. There you go, 1.39 volts. Yes, we've got something. What on earth has happened here? How could it have ever worked? Anyway, look, we've got something here, but we're missing a lot of the display. Is it even making any sense? Right, okay, let's... Uh, I'll tell you what I'll do, let's just pop it in here just in case the pressure makes it go together. Yes, it's starting to come back. Why is this not making any sense in the middle? <laughs> it's like, uh, what's that supposed to be? Oh, must be a zero. How does the light work? Oh, stopwatch is going. Like, let's see now if it goes to 12, 10 and 12. Yes, it does. Okay, so that's supposed to be a zero, so the display is still not working properly. And set up here. Mode. Right, this is a really, really, really strange one because I just don't understand why, how that ever happened to be like that. Really strange. But anyway, we've still got a problem with the display here and it doesn't even look like it's attempting to do it when it's on that zero there. Also, I don't think all the buttons are working. So that looks like it's doing something. This one looks like it's working. This one looks like it's working. But the set button doesn't. Unless, for example, I have to hold down set with something else. The day looks like it's working as well, because there's a little line there. Right, so we need to find out what's happening with the set button and also that one there. I wonder if that's to do with the worn contact. So let's pop these batteries out again. There's a few things I need to look at. I need to look at why the display's not working. I'm thinking it's probably to do with these contacts here because it's not just one, there's a few of them that are a bit iffy. So I need to work out some solution for that. I also need to work out why the light's not working because the light itself does have continuity across it. So it means the bulb itself is not blown. I'm thinking it's more to do with this side here. So let's just zoom in, check this, and then we also need to find out about this set button. So we know that the light comes across, light comes across here, goes through the wires to uh, this area here. And look, I think the problem is it's not connecting to here. So again, you can hear continuity there. And look, if I go here, I don't think it's making a contact here. I think it's just completely gone. Yeah, so we need to somehow join this bit to the light on the other side. Now, when it comes to the actual set button, let's see what's happening here, find out which one it is. So this is going to be on here like that, which 
is a set button, set buttons. This is a set button here. So it's going to be like here. So the set button is this one here. So we need to find out what's happening with this one. So let's zoom in on here. And I presume that's why the set button's not working because look, it's completely missing from here. So we've got it here, but not here. But this is still confusing to me because the thing is, uh, I mean, it will probably make it clear when, when a few people mention in the comments, it might be something really obvious, but the batteries have been in here. This has leaked or this has got water damage or something for all this corrosion to happen. So the watch must have been working, but this thing here looks absolutely perfect. You know, in the original thing, you can see now it's not perfect because I've had to reverse everything. But the creases and everything look perfect to begin with. Unless, of course, somebody's put two watches together and they haven't quite married up. So they might have put the inside of this watch into another one to see if it would work. Obviously, I don't know the history of this. If I was the original owner, I would know. But this might have gone through many different hands. I'm just thinking, is it the sort of watch where anybody would actually try to repair? Because I'm thinking it's not going to be an expensive watch. It's not really, uh, it hasn't even got a brand, has it? Advanced Quartz, I mean, what? I don't even know what brand this is. Hmm. And up here it did say, I think it said Hong Kong or something. I mean, when I take this off here, I gave the glass a little clean. I need to give the glass a bit of clean, and also it means I can clean this little mirror stuff underneath as well, this reflexive bit. If you look up here, it says Teleart Limited. No jewels, unadjusted, Hong Kong. I mean, this really doesn't seem like it's going to be an expensive watch. So I think I need to connect this to here. We also need to connect up, it's not just here as well, so we need to do a wire from here up to here. But look, it also branches off, so when we come back through here, you see it branches off to here. So remember, this trace now is no longer connected and it doesn't seem to be connected this side. So now we go down, across, yep. Yeah. If we go here, we go down, across, so it must be this one here. So I also need to somehow connect up this one to here as well. I just broke the uh, just broke the light. Ah. <laughs> it's still just hanging on in there. That's just going to burn away now, isn't it? No, it's not hanging in there. Yeah. Okay, apologies for the noise. My wife is cleaning the carpet. She's been putting it off all day and I've been filming all day. So uh, unfortunately, I'm just going to have to shout over it. Most of this next bit now will just be being fast forwarded through with some music playing in the background. So obviously, I've got a lot of repairs to do on here. I'm going to be using a variety of different things. I'm going to be using very thin enameled wire. This wire here is 0.1 millimeters. So that's right, yeah, one tenth of a millimeter. So it's absolutely tiny. So I'm going to be using that where I can, but I'm not sure now whether I'm going to be able to solder into these vias because I think maybe they're just sort of painted, it might not be possible. I've also got this stuff here which is quite interesting. This is copper tape, but it's copper tape which is actually conductive on both sides. So it's not just one side that's conductive, the underneath of it is conductive as well, so the adhesive is conductive. So that might be a bit of a winner. And last but not least, I've got the cheap silver conductive paint that you get from China. So hopefully between a mixture of these, I might be able to get some of the features working again. At least if I could get the set working again and the display working again, I'd be over the moon with that. So uh, let's get a move on with it. Mm. I wish I was above the center of attention, but I'm not. I wish I didn't have to give in to the pressure, uh-oh mm. I'm posting pictures, trying to be someone I'm not It feels just like I'm lying to you I'm faking stages, trying to listen perfect 
perfect life I know I'm wasting time Cause I just wanna call my friends And see what they're doing tonight It doesn't have to be so special I try to be myself You do the same and we'll be alright Start a conversation with someone Just be who I am, not care so much about first impressions Cause I got a feeling that it could be great Skip all the acts, not playing games Maybe ripping and daring me and tell you my name Yeah, I got a feeling that it could be great Skip all the acts, not playing games No more consent and daring me, I won't be ashamed Cause I just wanna call Okay, so I've just got the UV light on this, trying to set the solder mask. So what I've done is I've run a couple of this runs of tiny wire here, one to get the light working and also the other one to come up to this point here. And uh, yeah, I had continuity there, which is good. But the problem is I also need, to, where it branches off, I needed to run to that little wire and I couldn't solder in there because it's just like kind of gold conductive paint. So what I did is I put a blob of solder on the actual wire and then I put uh, silver conductive paint on top of it and then put the blob of solder in the conductive paint and then put the heat on it to make it go off quicker. And sure enough, when I tested for continuity, it was there, which is good. So now I've put con uh, solder mask on it to try to kind of keep it all in place because otherwise it'd be very easy for that conductive paint just to lose that wire. Also I've put some silver conductive paint just down on the contacts as well to hopefully make the LCD work better. Whether it's going to work or not I don't know. Now that I've put the solder mask on I hope it hasn't dislodged anything but time will tell. Boom boom. Now when it comes to the actual watch itself I'm a bit confused. Originally I thought this was vintage. I haven't googled it. It could well be vintage but some things don't quite look right. So this thing up here I thought was to allow the alarm sound to come out. But look, there's no, there's nothing there on the inside there. So is that really going to allow any sound to come out? Maybe it will, I don't know. Or is it to make it look a bit more interesting, to make it look a bit more vintage, to make it look a bit more like a, a speaker watch? You know, you could get those Seiko ones that actually spoke to you when you held down a button. It spoke to you the time. I'm not too sure about this one, but yet yeah, when I look at the strap here, it definitely looks like it's got a little bit of wear to it. So I don't know whether it's modern or vintage or not. I think I'm going to have to Google it and see. The thing is, the, what do I Google? Advanced Quartz LC? Quartz LC? Is that the name? Is that the brand? Not too sure. But anyway, I'm uh, just waiting for that to go off and then we'll see what's working or what's not working. Has actually gone off. So watch this now. If I get my multimeter and set it to continuity, hopefully you will be able to hear that we now have continuity between here and here, which we have, and also branching down to, can't remember which one it was. I think it might be this one. No, this one. There we go, that one there. Excellent. So we've got continuity to there. So that circuit should be okay. Now, do you remember the lighting circuit here? I had to run a wire from here and I did it round to here. Now, annoyingly, I did lean on the light and it broke. There's still continuity, but it'll probably burn out straight away. I'll have to see if you can buy them. I'm sure you can. But now watch, if I go between here, which goes all the way round to the pad at the back and then round to here, you can now see that we have continuity there. So that should be okay. And lastly, I'm just gonna add a little bit more heat to these contacts down here and I don't know whether or not that will make the difference on the LCD. I've just got it at 100 degrees Celsius which is the lowest my heat station will go to but I'm pointing the heat away from this solder blob here and I'm not holding it on for very long at all. But I think I'm going to leave it at that so I'm just going to let that dry for a little bit longer and then we'll reassemble it and see if any of it's working. Right, that appears to be dry now and then not shortened to each other. So if you watch now, I've got a little bit more uh, contact to go on there and I've got no shorts between them. So I kind of put the paint on and then just scraped it off as it was going hard. But 
Right, okay. Let's put it back together and see what it does. Right, I'm just going to try to work out how this watch works and the different functions on it and then I'll get back to the filming. Okay, it's, uh, it's nearly done. It's strange. Watch this now. You'll see it be nice and bright and then a few seconds later it will go dim. There you go. And back bright again. Dim. Bright. So it's been about two hours later now and I managed to get rid of the fading by just taking it apart again and I just moved that enamel wire just away from the transistor. So I'm not sure if it was shortened against one of the legs, shouldn't matter because it's enameled, or whether it was somehow causing some sort of interference or something. Or it could be complete coincidence and maybe just taking it apart and putting it back together again has sorted it out. But for the last couple of hours now that hasn't faded in and out at all so that's definitely fixed. So as far as the watch is concerned it all looks pretty good apart from the fact it doesn't work properly so let me tell you the problems that are still on it and unfortunately the the main thing that's wrong with it is unfixable so there's no point in me trying to fix anything else so to begin with the light doesn't work i presume because i broke the glass on it as soon as i hit the light the first time that little filament probably just burnt out straight away so that could be fixed i'm sure i could get a replacement one off them the other thing that doesn't work is the alarm. I can't find the alarm. This button works fine here. You can see it goes to the date, but it doesn't matter if I hold this button down for two, three seconds, press it twice, press it three times. It doesn't make any difference. Any combination that I've done, like holding these two for two, three seconds, these two for two or three seconds, doesn't get the alarm to come up. So unfortunately, I can't actually test that. I don't know whether this looks like it hasn't got an alarm, but obviously, it's got the button for it and it's got the buzzer at the back, but I just can't find out what setting it is. And I've spent about 45 minutes looking on Google and I still couldn't find out what the combination is to check the alarm. But anyway, let's forget about all that because the main problem is, is that you can't tell the time properly. It works perfectly as far as the time's concerned, but the display is still not working on the bottom and top digits. So watch this now. It's fine when we're in the tens and it's fine when we're in the forties because they don't use the top and bottom. But look when we go to stopwatch. Can you see there? That looks like 11, but that is actually zero. And if we set it going for the first 10 seconds, it doesn't look right. It looks like, for example, 114 seconds, 116 seconds. But watch this now. When we go into the tens, it will look perfect. Yeah, and also it will look perfect when we go into the 40s as well. So I don't think it's anything to do with the contacts on the actual printed circuit board because I replaced it with the paint pen and they look to be okay now. I'm wondering if it's a problem with the actual glass, the LCD itself, and maybe where corrosion sat in. I'm wondering if it actually damaged the glass rather than, because you've seen the damage on the circuit board, I'm wondering whether the glass is actually affected or not doesn't really matter because you can still tell I know that that's a three so and the two looks different than the five and I know what a zero looks like because there's two one so you can actually tell the time pretty easily once you get used to it but this isn't an expensive watch so it's kind of if you want a working one you might as well spend the 20 pound or 25 pound to get yourself a working one rather than having one that's not working properly yeah so you can see now that that's going to be one minute and three seconds it's a little bit confusing now the uh, advance is definitely the make of the watch this is definitely an old watch because i've looked up advance and they've got quite a few watches that look to be from the 1980s and this logo is exactly the same with the way the d and the v is like the v is kind of vertical and it's a bit like a tick going that way now quartz lc i think that was taken from seiko so seiko made this first quartz lc which was a six digit quartz so let's just I'll come back to that in a second. Watch this now. If I press lap, can you see it starts flashing here is on? So that's quite nice. And then you can take it off lap. All right, let's just stop that, clear that, and go back to here. So you see it's a six-digit display. So for example, when it's 12, it'd be one, two, three, four, five, six. So I presume earlier on the digital watches would have just been a four-digit display. And by having a Quartz LC, a six-digit display, I believe that's what it means anyway, uh, it, it will then allow you to get the exact time. So for example, I can set this now and have it so the second hand, uh, the second here goes to zero. So you can set perfect time rather than just having the four digits there. So I believe it's taken its name from that. So I do actually think this is probably from the early 1980s, but I think from what it was before, 
I think I'm, I'm quite happy with the uh, end result. There was a nice little bit of fixing going on there with running the enameled wire and then also the silver conductive paint as well and having a mixture of two to get it to work. I think that was, uh, I was quite happy with that little result there. And how weird was that thing with the, the negative, with the, you know, going the wrong way around? What is that about? That is really confusing to me, really, really confusing. So this watch looked like it would have never worked, but yeah, it's got wear. So I really don't know what's going on there. I think things have been swapped around. So uh, anyway, look, that is it for this video. I enjoyed the fix and I think it was well worth spending the money on it. And uh, yeah, certainly I think an interesting item. So if you did too, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe for more trying to fix videos. Take care. Bye now. Thank you.